Okay, here we go again. I'm sitting here, still bored, still home from work. Um, decided to go ahead and expand on the video I, I did yesterday about the uh, move instruction over here. We're going to do something with compare, add to it a little bit, and kind of step through, compare a little bit, and show you some stuff. Give you something else kind of mess around with and learn. You can poke at something long enough, you learn more about it, I guess, the way I look at it anyway. And plus it gives me something to do and helps you at the same time. Anyways, I'm going to put a link to this site. I did in a video yesterday also, but I'll put a link in there again to this. I, I strongly recommend going there and, and downloading this user manual ladder. That is a very good tool. for. It's got plenty of sample programs in it. It steps you through the different functions, how to do it. You can actually learn to program this PLC if you took the time to go through the 500 and something pages of it. And, you know, it, it's step by step pretty much. I mean, it's re it's a real good resource too. If you run into trouble programming something, you can't quite get it to work right, go to the manual. Don't be too proud. Go in there and look. You can figure out how to get it fixed and get it to working right. I mean, I do it. Anybody that doesn't use their resources is not a very smart person in my opinion. You always use all your resources available to you. That makes for a smart person. Um, here's the, the manual itself. I have it on my computer. You can go through there, like I say, and it, it starts from safety precautions, about the manual, table of contents, operation basics. I mean, it starts right there and pretty much tells you you know, how to go in it, what, how to put in the program. I mean, you could go step by step. It tells you how to get to the different functions, how to input them. I mean, you can go right through there and page by page, do a couple of pages at a time. You'll get pretty good at it. I mean, and do it over and over. Repetition. Make it stick to your brain, you know. But I go to this manual quite a bit. And I highlight stuff in there. I mark it up. And that way there's things I remember. I'll tag it and put, you know, notes in it and, whatever, you know, to help me remember stuff. But anyhow, that's enough on that. I just figured I'd show you that. It's a real good tool. I would strongly recommend downloading it and going through it and keeping it by you while you're doing your, your um, program. You know, and you always have the help up here. You know, if you, if you have something open like that, you can always go to help. And it'll... Um, right here, that little question mark, I guess I should have pointed at it. You can go to that. It'll pull it up, it pulled it up over here, see, and it kind of goes through there and tells you some of the stuff about it. But in my opinion, I like the manual better. The manual just seems like a really good resource, and it's got good pictures in it. And if you like me, I like pictures. You know, you can, pictures help a lot. But anyhow, let's get into this a little bit here. So the other video we went through there, we put these simple move instructions in there. We had them coming off of a... Uh, web page that we made right here okay so here's our web page that we, we did yesterday pretty much just to go through it again we had this input dumping into d0 data register 0 we had this input dumping into data register 4 okay these are both comparing with data register 2 so we'll open these up and I'll show you so there's data register 4 this is that one, data register zero. These are both set at word. So there's not a negative value. They're just one through 65,000 something, whatever the hell it is. I don't even remember. There's a lot of numbers you can go with. In the manual, there's also tells, a section tells you about the different different types of data you can use. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of data, but word works fine as long as you're not using negatives. If you're gonna use negatives, you gotta go to, I think, integer. You're gonna use negative numbers. Um, anyway, that's the gist of that. So basically, here, we'll kind of go through the simulation again on this. All right, let's put it in a run. Run, okay. This is in Word. This is in Word. So you're sending a Word to a Word device, basically. You, you don't want to send a Word to an integer. That, that doesn't work very good sometimes. Um, make sure you get the same data types you're pulling from. Either that or you got to do what they call a data conversion. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, just to show you, here's our number that it's showing right there. So if I clear that out now, I'm going to put in there 6459, enter. 6459 comes over here. It populates that. Same thing over here. I clear that out, and I put 5234, enter. 
Okay, let's put five, two, three, four here. It dumps it in there. It's actually dumping it in data register four, and this is looking at data register four. This is pointing to data register four. If you hear those fancy terms people use, this is installing this number into data register four. This is reading this number from data register four to make it a little more simple. <clears throat> okay, let's get it back out of simulation here, and we'll take this one back out of run just for a minute. Okay, so we want to compare this to something. So say we have a, um, I don't know, we have a, a pulse input, a counter, it's counting boxes going by. We want, you know, 100 boxes to go by, and then we want a, something to happen, and maybe a conveyor moves over, pushes those over, and puts them in a box, a big box, whatever, you know. You think of a million different scenarios. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a compare to do that. So to set up a compare, you have to have a bit that initiates it also. So I'm going I'm to try to keep from using my fingers on the fast board and try to do this the old-fashioned way here. Normally open. And I'll explain as we do this. Double-click it. I'm going to call this M0. Okay. Compare is under your advanced instruction. All right. It's data comparison. They ever, all PLC programs, they call the same function different things. There's many different names. So this is, this is called data comparison compare. Now let's do a compare that's greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to right there. Okay. So in other words, let, let, me, let me get it all filled out. I'll show you how to fill it out. All right. We want to make sure. Now, make sure this is Word also, Word to Word, Word, okay? All right, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. All right, we're going to compare our S1. This is our source. Our, our source, the chain of events, this moves into this, all right? This button's pushed, it moves this into this, all right? So that's data two, all right? And then this button's pushed also, it also compares whatever's in here to this, all right? So we wanna compare, this is our, our number we're wanting to compare that we're moving. So we're gonna put that in our source one. That's our data register two, D two, okay? Our source two, this is what we're comparing to, this is our Say a counter. We got a counter maybe somewhere or something counting a pulse. We want to. We we may get into that and put a counter in here later too. Also, I don't want to make the video too long, so I may move to another video and do it. All right. So we're gonna say this. We haven't used data register six yet, so let's use uh, data register six. And I already got a label preset for some reason. Okay. Now when this number is equal to or greater than that number. I want something to happen. I want to use a memory bit. I'm going to use a memory bit to come on. So let's make that memory bit, we'll say six. Okay. And it, okay. So now to walk back through this, let's go ahead and save it. When this button's pushed, this number that came from here is going to move to data register two. All right. Data, this is going to point this number to data register two. This is looking at data register two. This is looking at data register six. It's going to compare this number that's in data register two to what's in data register six. Once this number is greater than or equal to what's in data register six, it's going to turn on memory bit six. Okay, we want the same thing to happen if it's set on ribbed. So we're going to put an ant, uh, or in here what they call or instruction. In other words, if I push this button, if this is on or this is on, it's going to initiate this compare. Let's go back up here, get another normally open. I'm going to click it. All right, so our ribbed is M01. So we're just going to make it M1. Enter. Okay. Take our little pencil, draw us a line right there. Okay. Now, now the way it's going to work, if this is pushed, it's going to move whatever's in data register four that came from here to data register four. It's going to move it into data register two. All right. It's going to initiate the compare through here 
because M1 is pushed, M1 is pushed, initiates the compare. It's going to compare what's in data register 2 that came from here to what's in data register 6. When this is greater to or equal to whatever's in 6, it's going to turn on memory bit 6. Okay? All right, let's make it turn on something. So we're going to come down here now. Let's get us something normally open. We're going to have this look at memory bit 6. Okay, let's go ahead and put us an output. Let's get us an out. It's our real world output. This is our paddle or our solenoid or whatever that is turning on that we want to, uh, something to happen in the real world of physical movement. So you can go in here, Q, pick one, showing you the ways to do it. Here, let's go ahead and name it something just so. We'll name it paddle okay you can also come in here and you can just type in q zero showing you different ways to do it okay there's plenty there's a lot of different ways you can insert data in here as you're building it you just got to figure out which way is more comfortable to you and it's quicker for you everybody has their own game you know how they do things and some things are just work quicker in other people's minds in different ways than they do in other people you know Okay, let's go ahead and save. Save and save often so you don't lose your stuff because these programs do crash from time to time and you will be frustrated if you do a lot of work and you lose something. So you need to make sure your auto save is turned on and I would still hit that save every now and then. Okay, so now see what happens here. Let's go ahead. Let's put this into, into um, simulate. I'm going to go to online. I'm going to go ahead and open up custom monitor here well uh, d0 we'll do d2 d4 d6 just this this shows you the state right here of what's going on here okay these are set at decimal words so it's looking at that if it was set at a bit you can change the states right here by the way different things all right it's, it's only letting you get something like this because you have it set as a data register but we want word everything has this has to match what this is. If it's not word, it's gonna come out with some funky numbers. See like, for instance, that's integer. All right, they don't like integer. It's decimal, they don't like decimal. There's a float, uh, hex. See, hex is something totally different. So you wanna, this is just good so you'll know there's binary. You want it to match. If you don't want it, if it didn't match, this number is not going to look like that number there or that number there. Okay? Just something to keep in mind. And this, this is for monitoring. This is a good tool for monitoring a program when you're actually hooked into a PLC and you want to see if a bit's coming on or off like it's supposed to. Maybe you have an action not happening. You're trying to see if you're actually getting an output from the PLC, from the logic in the PLC. Yes, I am. So maybe I need to go check the actual physical output on the PLC at Q0 and see if I'm getting voltage out of it. You know, it's, it's a pretty good diagnostic tool, what I'm getting at, not to get off topic, but there's a lot of stuff in here you can use diagnosing PLC troubles. Okay, so let's put this back in run. Okay, so now I want to, let's go ahead and change this number. Let's change that to, um, I don't know, I bet. 70. Oh, why am I getting that fail again? Oh, I know what it is. I didn't put four digits in there. Now I'm still getting communication fail because it's showing that on and that's off. Hang on. Let's see what I got going on here. Let's go save page. Let's go back into uh, run. One, two, three, four. Enter. Now, why am I getting a fail now?
That one's working. That's working. Okay. I'm uh, getting glitchy, I guess. Okay. Anyways, yeah, some of this stuff is kind of glitchy. Hopefully, they'll work on some of that. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Who knows? Anyhow, okay. See, 8547 is over here. 8765 is down here. All right. Now, when I hit move on here, see, it moves this 8547 to, eight, to D2. All right. D2, 8547. This is greater than that, so Q0 is on. All right, and then when I come over here to, um, I'm going to get my monitor back up here. What's going to do D6? D6. Okay, so my D6. Is one, two, three, four. All right, I want to make it. Let me make it a uh, 8550. All right. This is my number that's coming from my counter. See how that went off? All right, so say my counter is only at uh, 2,000. See, that's on. Because this number that's coming from here is greater than that. So let's see. Let's go to... Play around with it a little bit here. All right, 500... See, that went off. Okay, so I've got this set at 500. So say at 500 pulses, or you know what, let's do it like this. We'll do like I said, um, 24 boxes, say. All right, and we want this one here. See, it moved to 24 over there. Let's go over here. We want to make this one, let's say this one's a 36 box case. Move 36, okay. Now... D6, let's put that at zero. All right. Here's our, our D6 is zero. So this is greater than that. This is our counter. So this is on. All right. And we go D6, let's say uh, 24. It's equal to that. So it's staying on. We go 25 pulses, that goes off. Okay, get the idea. And now let's see, we'll turn this one off. We could do these as an alternate. I might show that later how to do these as a multi button or something. This one's on, so we're moving 36 into here. So once 36, this number is greater than 36, it's going to go off. Let's see where our little deal is. All right, so we'll go 37. See, it went off. Thirty-five, it's gonna come back on. Okay. At thirty-six, it's gonna stay on. Because it's equal to. Okay, you see how you can use this hopefully to make something happen. Um We'll go into another video. This one's probably at about 20 minutes now. I'll do another one later, and I'll incorporate a counter of some kind. Or we can put a pulse. Maybe I'll put a one-second clock where it starts pulsing and resets, and that way we can make it actually do a whole sequence to where it's counting, 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 or it moves, and then it counts, 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 initiates something, stops, counts, 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 initiates, stops. I'll do that later, though. This video is getting kind of long, but we'll, we'll work on that on the next session. Maybe this gives you something to mess around with. Shows you how to program it a little bit. And there's, like I say, there's different compares you can play with. There's equal to, there's greater than and equal to. There's not equal to. There's uh, less than or equal to. Lots of stuff you can mess with. And like I said before, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on YouTube. I'll answer them if I can. Uh, please subscribe to the IDEC PLC forum. They need more traffic. I know I keep hitting on this. I'm going to start hitting on it more because we need a lot more traffic. Um, strength in numbers type thing you know what i mean the more people use it the more interaction we can get the more we can learn um also subscribe to my channel the more people i see following me the more interested i get and i like doing videos where people are actually paying attention to me and i'm kind of needy anyways all right well, thank y'all <laughs>